You'll soon be a Zoom person, Danielle. <laughs> soon, it's <laughs> this year. I love getting some practice in, in the program's role, so. Okay. Right. Oh, man, I'll just cover the uh, first slide. Again, this is um, PMI Maine's June um, 2023 member event. We want to welcome you um, to this exciting event. Um, could you go to the next slide, please? Yeah. Um, one thing that's pretty exciting is that um, the chapter has been around um, since 1986. And I remember um, dating myself. I remember going back to the early 90s. And um, there were 40-something people in the chapter. Now there's 450-something people. And it's, it's, it's really grown a lot. And it's really a testament to the membership and um, all the folks over the years that um, have put a lot of hard work into um, establishing the, ch the chapter. But I just like that little fun fact. You know, 1986, that's a little, you know, it's a long time ago. Yes. I'd like to introduce um, our current sponsor is ProSearch. They're our platinum sponsor. They've been a platinum sponsor for PMI Maine for I don't know how many years. I don't have enough fingers to count it. Um, we're currently look, um, looking at gold and silver sp uh, sponsorships. So if you know any companies that want to get um, involved, um, let us know and we'd be very, any of the board members and be very happy to um, have conversations um, about sponsoring uh, PMI Maine. All right. So, um, Joe, I, do you, would you like to welcome our new members or would you, you want me to cover this? If you, if you want, if you don't mind covering, that'd be awesome. No, not at all. Wearing a dual hat, um, covering our membership as well as the programs piece. Um, so, you know, as Joe mentioned, our chapter is fairly large, you know, given, um, I think given given the size of the state, you know, it's uh, we have 465 actual um, members um, and counting. I was looking at updating the slide and um, from last month, we're up up 10 people, which you can see our new members here. Um, Parker Lachance, Amber Tropster, uh, Jamie Willett, William Andrew, Ina Young, Daniel Jocelyn, Eric Simmons, Tegan Simpkins, Brittany um, Savy, and Melissa Lawrence. So welcome to our 10 new members. Um, we hope you find value in, in membership with our chapter. Um, and we look forward to seeing you um, at our future uh, in-person and or hopefully in-person eventually and our Zoom monthly uh, meetings as well as some um, fun networking events that the uh, board has in the works um, to bring to our members. All right. So our chapter um, would not be possible events like tonight's event and the prior events and then some of those exciting um, events in the future. All of those are only possible because of um, our volunteers. Um, everyone that is on the board um, that you're going to hear from tonight is a, is a, a chapter volunteer. Um, and we have other folks that serve in other volunteer capacities, maybe not directly in a board position, but um, maybe as part of our committees, um, helping each of our board members, you know, fulfill their duties and roles um, in their volunteer board positions. Um, one particular person um, who is going to help moderate our event tonight, she's a very active volunteer with our chapter, Melanie Gressler. Um, she is our June volunteer spotlight. And as I mentioned, she's going to serve as our June event moderator um, as part of this roundtable event. Um, so with that, um, Melanie, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Do you want to walk us through and give us a little bit of background about yourself, um, how many years you've been a member and, um, you, you know, the some hobbies and interests that you have, as well as your favorite thing about being a PMI main member? Sure. Thanks, Danielle. Um, so I'm a project manager at Parsons. Um, I'm a remote employee. Um, I joined PMI Maine when I moved up to Maine and became a remote employee two years ago. Um, at one of our events, met Danielle and the rest of the board and was very excited to get more involved in the chapter. Um, so that's when I started uh, being part of the volunteer committee. Uh, hobbies, you know, I like to do a little bit of everything, but some of my favorites are photography, baking, just being outside, so paddleboarding, going to the beach, all that. Um, and then reading, watching movies, 
not the most exciting hobby person, but uh, try to stay busy. Um, and PMI Maine has just really helped me connect with the community um, since moving here. And then I really love how you get to just meet project managers from diverse backgrounds, um, but also find so many commonalities just in what our day-to-days look like. So it's been really great. Looking forward to doing more. And I, Melanie, I would say your hobbies are incredibly interesting and they're pretty, pretty hard. Baking is not an easy, an easy item and neither is paddle boarding. So <laughs> that, and or for time. That's why they're hobbies. Still working on them. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's very exciting. All right. All right. So I think we are ready to get started with the round table section now. Um, so I know the board wanted to kind of do a little something different here for the round table um, so you could get to know them a little bit more, but also they could get to know you a little bit more and what they what you are looking for out of the chapter, um, since really members are, are what make the chapter. Um, so I think we're going to start it off with our president, Joe. Joe, do you want to tell us a little bit about your role as president? Hi, my name is Joe Quatz, um, president of PMI Maine. Um, the responsibilities I have is help setting the strategic direction for the the chapter, um, ensuring that um, chapter policies are followed, and also ensuring that we fall within the um, PMI policies. I'm responsible for f um, filing um, um, statements with the state of, of incorporation, um, oversight of the of of the the different aspects, um, finance programs. I don't do them. It's oversight. Um, it's, it's more like a, um, a chief operating officer role. Um, and it's fun. So I get to dabble in a little bit of everything. And, um, what's even more fun is I get to work with a wonderful bunch of people that are really smart and it's a learning opportunity for me. Um, sometimes on a weekly basis. So it's, it's really neat. The other, pieces of my role is outreach to corporations um, across the state of Maine um, to to help uh, increase the awareness of project management and PMI um, in, in the state of Maine. We've made connections with the state of Maine uh, itself, IDEX, um, UNUM, um, and, and Maine Health. A little bit about me. Um, I work at Maine Health. I'm a senior project manager. I've been there a couple of instances. If you add them both up, it's like eight years um, over two stents. Um, I'm also an adjunct professor at um, the Ruhr Institute, teaching project management a uh, course or two um, to a year. So um, between PMI, um, being a project manager and teaching project management, um, doesn't leave me a whole lot of time for hobbies. But my hobbies are gardening and um trying to keep my grass green, which is really easy to do right now because of all the rain, but give it another you know, few weeks and it'll be brown again. Um, that's, um, I have a, I have one son and two grandchildren, which I'm really proud of. I have a five-year-old grandson and almost a two-year-old granddaughter. Um, and they're, they're really cute. Um, in a nutshell, that's me. <laughs> you definitely keep busy, Joe. All right, and now we're going to pass it over to Megan, who is also very busy. She is our president-elect um, and also our treasurer for the chapter. Hello, hello. I am Megan, and that is true, I admit. I help Joe with all of his duties, and I, I represent him if he's unavailable. And also that, that means that I'll step into his footsteps. When he steps down, I'll become the chapter president uh, after I've learned the ways of, of the president. Um, my additional duties fall under the treasurer role. And in that role, I, um, I maintain and manage accounts receivable, receivable and payable for our financial portfolios, um, track the chapter dues, uh, track payment of chapter bills in accordance with our committee directives. Uh, we, we maintain I say, I, I say we a lot. As a treasurer, I maintain the required chapter bank accounts, uh, similar financial transactions, provide range for officer signatures, for instance, um, large, large uh, items require Joe to sign off on, provide the financial reporting to the state, file our taxes, develop 
our annual budget in conjunction with the other uh, board directors specific to each of their roles. There is a, there is a budget depending on what's needed for, for that particular um, department within our chapter. And then of course, establish, maintain and ensure compliance with the financial operational processes and in order to ensure security. Um, and also, you know, distribute and communicate the, the financial section of our annual report. So any, any of you who would like more transparency into our chapter finances, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to share uh, completely transparent with everything. And, and, and we do, we do um, try to make the most economically uh, viable decisions while keeping in mind what it is our chapter members really want you know, the, the bang for your buck. So, oh, oh, and a little bit about me, okay? I work for CVS Aetna. I'm a manager of project management there. I implement Medicaid contracts when Aetna wins a state contract. I oversee the implementation of that contract within that state to include the hiring of staff to run the Medicaid plan in that state. Um, among other things, you know, there's a lot involved in a Medicaid contract, as you can imagine. My background is much more diverse than my current position. I come from a background of both, uh, of I shouldn't say both, the, the trifecta of healthcare, uh, IT, enterprise implementations, and also construction. So and have been involved in constructing hospitals, military um, uh installations, educational, institutional construction settings. So quite a diverse project management background and kind of plays into my mantra. If you're a project manager, you can manage any project. And that is where I'll leave off. Thank you, Melanie. I do love that mantra. That's perfect. All right. Um, so I will hand off next to Danielle, who is our director of programs and membership. Great. Right. Thanks, Melanie. Um, so, you know, hi everyone. My name is Danielle Logston. Um, I am currently serving as the director of programs and also wearing the um, director of membership hat as well. Um, so, uh, you know, as a board member, and I think Joe and Megan kind of touched on this, you know, we have our assigned roles, but we also sometimes have other other roles and other um, areas within the chapter that need need coverage and attention. So, you know, we kind of all share those responsibilities if there isn't somebody that's directly assigned um, to, to that role. Membership is, is one of those um, areas. So if anyone is interested in learning more about an open position on our current board and, you know, want to throw your hat in the ring, maybe join our board, um, please feel free to reach out to, to uh, any one of the board members here tonight. And we can definitely, you know, talk with you a little bit more about maybe um, getting more involved with the chapter in that capacity. Um, so with that being said, I um, am right now primarily focused on our the program's role, um, simply because that is the area that um, brings, I think, the most to our membership. Um, not not that the other other areas don't that the board members, but we're all here tonight because we're looking for PDUs and we're looking to learn from each other. And a lot of that is what I am responsible for trying to help facilitate and bring to the chapter with the support of the other board members. Um, so with that, I um, am responsible for putting a strategy together for the improvement of our professional development and training programs. Um, I'm also responsible for helping um, to um, produce and coordinate any external education activities and study groups, seminars, workshops, or courses um, that are, are a benefit, benefit to our members. Um, there is a bit of a career development information sharing with our members and non-members that, that I, am, I am also responsible for. Um, and also, um, I am responsible for providing guidance to members and non-members on PM um, certification and recertification. Um, I also am responsible, excuse me, sorry, I lost my place here. Um, I'm also responsible for not only helping to coordinate, you know, our standing monthly meetings, but any sort of special events outside of those designed to enhance any skills or knowledge around project management and promote project management um, 
um, the project management profession. So I think um, that kind of leads me into wanting to focus on getting more networking events on our calendars for the coming months um, to start to bring this, this community of project managers we have together um, in, in different settings and different um, yeah, different settings outside of just having having a Zoom call with a you know a speaker um, that walks us through a you know a slide deck. Those are those are great and and a great way to learn about project management profession. But um, really, my role is to try to you know take those examples, continue to build on them, and then enhance some other examples. Um, I get a lot of support from the other board members. I work really closely with um, marketing Stephen Molina, um, who we'll hear from in a, in a little bit. Um, Stephen is is definitely very very helpful in helping me to get the programs um, pulled up on and posted to our website and making sure we have a good marketing strategy to ensure um, the most you know we're getting the most information out to our members about upcoming events. Um, Megan and Joe are also incredibly helpful when it comes to putting together the details for those events. So there's. Like Joe was saying, um, there's probably not a week that goes by that at least one member of the board I'm not, you know, working with or, or having direct contact with. And then, you know, I lean on the other board members like Chris, who is here, and Kristen to also provide feedback on what programs um, they think our our members would like to see and help provide support um, when when they're when they're available to make our our program successful. Um, so it's a little bit of background around the director of programs. Um, I would put a little plug in here. We are trying to um, work in having and bringing back our professional development series. So we are planning on hosting that in October. So more details to come. We're still fine tuning those details, but don't know if anybody that's in attendance tonight has ever attended one of our professional development series um, in the past. We haven't had one for a couple of years due to COVID. Um, and we've the ones we have had have looked a little different. They've been via Zoom. Um, in the month of October. So we are trying to to bring bring that back because um, that was definitely an event or program that brought a lot of value to our membership. Um, so like I said, more more details to come on that. Um, from a membership perspective, um, the, the role that I play there, um, just trying to really coordinate um, with the other board members on how to enhance our, our memberships, um, just our numbers, how to reach out actively to members um, that might have membership uh, memberships that are lapsing. Um, and again, trying to serve as that primary contact um, for members if, if they have any questions. Um, I th think that's it. I don't know if um, any of the other board members have anything to add that I might have missed, but um, yep. A little we bit know of you're working hard. <laughs> yeah, no, no problem. So I guess a little bit of background about myself. Um, I uh, work with Avangrid Networks um, based up in Augusta. Um, I am part of their financial and operations management team. Um, I had been serving in a project manager capacity here recently. Um, I was, I, I, I say I was, I recently received a promotion, but in my project manager role, um, I was serving as the primary lead over our entire capital portfolio management for our networks operations group. So um, anything to do with our electric operations, um, a lot of our gas operations, um, all, uh, all of all of that um, was was under my my helm and um, what I had overseen. Um, in this new role, I am going to be managing a larger team where we're going to, I'm going to be able to continue to oversee our capital portfolio investments, as well as um, start to take a look at that operating and maintenance side of, of the business. So I'm excited for that new opportunity um, and the opportunity to manage a pretty great team that, that I'll be overseeing now. Um, outside of work and volunteering with the board, I um, try to stay very active. My husband and I um, moved to Maine about five years ago, so we definitely participate in all of the Maine activities, um, the hiking, the, the cross-country skiing, um, the downhill skiing, all of it. So we, we really enjoy the winter and the summer here. Um, and then um, I also like to bake. So that's, that's a little bit about myself. Um, and thank you for listening. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Danielle. 
Um, and I know David Reed, our director of technology, was not able to make it, but um, I'm not going to do it justice here, I'm sure, because I know that he has a huge role um, in this board as well. But he is responsible for all the technology related components of the chapter, including acquisition of new technology, support and maintenance of the current technology, and all the security measures that go with that as well. So um, I will I will throw it to him of if you have any questions or are more interested in that role, definitely we can have you reach out or reach out to the board members here that can probably tell you a lot more about that role. Um, but with that, I'm going to send it over to Chris, who is the secretary for the chapter. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Chris Orr. I am the chapter secretary for the 23, 20, 23 and 24 term. Um, uh, my a brief description of my responsibilities are pretty much as you would assume for a secretarial position. Uh, I, I do a lot of work with documentation. Uh, one of my primary responsibilities is to you know maintain the meeting minutes from our board of directors meetings and, and document those meetings uh, in accordance with uh, the parliament and pr parliamentary procedures that are determined by the board. Uh, I also send notice of meetings out uh, of the annual meeting uh, to the chapter members. Uh, and I will provide uh, records to members and outside organizations if uh, if they request them. Uh, I will also coordinate the distribution of, of general correspondence to the chapter and uh, you know provide uh, communication lists and member updates to the chapter officers uh, upon requests. Um, my part of my responsibility is to uh, coordinate the production and distribution of timely membership reports uh, like monthly membership reports. Uh, and oversee our PME, uh, PMI document library, and uh, again, uh, assure the safekeeping of our governing documents, which include our chapter bylaws, our articles of incorporation, our charter agreement, et cetera. And, uh, you know, generally coordinate and distribute uh, meeting agendas and keep records of all our board and, and chapter business meetings. So um, in as much as, uh, it doesn't sound very exciting. There, there's certainly plenty to do, um, and uh, it, believe it or not, it's it's actually fairly challenging to keep up with it at the moment. Uh, a little bit about me: I'm a program manager for AECOM. I, I'm currently deployed to Arkansas on a on a disaster housing recovery project uh, um, uh, following a tornado in Wynn, Arkansas. So what we do is um, uh, we, we bring temporary housing uh, and, and and install temporary housing for folks that need it. Um, and so I've been out here since uh, late May. Uh, hope to be going home later this week uh, and uh, look very much looking forward to that. Uh, I also do a lot of uh, very different and sundry uh, disaster recovery related things. Uh, and to echo what was said earlier, um, it doesn't matter what kind of project you're working on. Uh, you can, you it's important to be able to understand project management. You can be a project manager on anything. You don't really have to know about what you're doing so much as how to be a project manager. And that especially applies in disaster recovery and emergency management. Um, I think a lot of the, a lot of the similar things, a lot of the things that we uh, take for granted as project managers are very important to apply in disaster recovery project management. Uh, specifically, uh, the planning and execution and monitoring pieces are extraordinarily important, especially when um, you have the government as a client. Uh, and some of you are aware of that, and some of you may not. Uh, but many of us have, have have probably locked arms with the government at one point or another. Uh, so this is no different. So it's a pleasure to meet all of you. Uh, I'm very glad to be here and happy to answer any questions anybody might have. But uh, thanks very much. Yeah, wow. Thank you for fitting us in while you're on work travel and stay safe. <laughs> um, okay, and last but not least, we have our Director of Marketing and Social Media, Stephen. Yeah, hi there, everybody. Um, glad to meet everyone virtually this evening if I haven't, meet, uh, haven't had a chance to meet you previously. So yeah, my name is Stephen Molina. Uh, I am the Director of Marketing and Social Media for our chapter here. Um, and I originally... I um, started this position earlier in the year. I got involved initially with the chapter, as many folks have um, and many board members have here as, as a volunteer. So um, I worked with the previous director um, of marketing and social media, um, Luke Bergeron, who, who, who did a, a quite a bit for the chapter and is still uh, frequently involved. And 
helped him a lot um, for kind of various different social media pieces was the biggest thing that I started to do. So any of the any of the social media uh, blasts you see from us, whether it's on Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn, um, when those go out, those are are through through me. Um, and so when he was looking to step away from the board uh, for a period of time, he he wanted to know if I'd be interested in running and filling his shoes, and and I was. Um, and so I, I jumped in into the race and was able to win. So I'm very happy to be working uh, alongside my fellow board members today. As you've heard, we, they do quite a lot um, for the chapter, and 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 of course they have very busy day jobs as, as well. Um, so it's important to consider. But yeah, I work very closely with. Danielle um, and Megan and and really, you know, Joe and the whole team, um, David and technology, we've, we've had a recent update to our website that has kind of been a an active working in, in progress for all of us as we kind of come up to speed with how how things function and, and how we can post events and get out um, email blasts when you see those type of things. Those are, you know, myself and Danielle and Megan working in the back of the system. So, um, yeah, but I'm very very proud to be on the board. I, in my day job, I work at the University of New England here in on the Portland campus mostly, but in Biddeford sometimes um, as the um, project manager for information technology services. So any of the new software applications that are rolling out across the colleges and, and departments throughout campus, um, or it could be, you know, a new integration or, or, or adjustments to our multi-factor authentication. I'm helping to kind of manage those different pieces with the various stakeholders that are involved. And um, as hobby for me, I, I'm a I'm a big big sports guy. If if you can't tell, so I uh, really enjoy to watch um, soccer or or football. I'm a big Arsenal fan. Um, I love to uh, play and and coach basketball. I actually worked in in the NBA for a few years, and um, now I actually coach at my alma mater of Shepherd's High School. Um, with boys basketball and the program over there. So I really enjoy to do that in the wintertime um, and a little bit over the summer. For me, I also do, you know, part of we, we love, uh, my girlfriend, we love to go do uh, yoga and um, try to get hikes, especially when we get some nice weather, like some we had today, which is very, very rare for, it seems, for, for this period for us. Um, in the winter, love to go, you know, snowshoeing and those kinds of things. We will say I'm in the basketball gym over the wintertime. Um, and, uh, yeah, I love, we have a little camp here. Um, my family does as well. So I love to spend a lot of time, as much time as I can up there or, uh, or golfing for me in the summertime is where, where I'm most happy. So, um, and then in terms of best project management advice that kind of I've, I've heard, tried to implement, um, is that nothing will kill a project quicker than a, a lack of buy-in. So trying to ensure that buy-in across all different groups and stakeholders, uh, for the project has really been a big piece for me. Um, and as although we're not salesmen or saleswomen, um, sometimes we have to, to do a little bit to get people on side. So um, that's probably what I would say. Uh, and that's about it for me. No, that's wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Um, if you're just joining, we just did kind of a quick um, roll call for the board. And then they told a little bit about what their role is. And um, is how they serve the chapter. Um, so now we're going to move into the second part of our roundtable here, where we hear from you guys. Um, Danielle, we have had a few more people join. Do we still want to keep it all one group? Or are we going to do breakouts? Yeah, I noticed that we had ni 19 in total, including the board members. Um, I, you know, I'm open to if we would like to do smaller breakout sessions. Um, does the other board members or have an opinion or do we want to keep it all together here and just walk through the feedback session we had planned as a group? Yeah. Or honestly, if you guys have an opinion as well and want to throw that in the chat, let us know. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, we, I have a, I have a few questions here that we like kind of standard we're going to go through, but definitely the goal is to just get feedback from, from all of you. So I don't know if yeah. there's a setting that you're more comfortable in if the group for, works or. For what it's worth, I think the energy in the group, the large group dynamic is, is healthier. I think it's good for everybody okay. to kind of hear all, all, the different, yeah. all, all the different opinions and, and comments that are made and gain perspective that everybody gets a chance to gain perspective on what's being said. So I, I do like the larger group context that, but that is just me. Yeah. That was good. Right. Thanks. Chris. All right. In the name of time, let's stick with it. <laughs> um, so I think, I think we, 
We might skip introductions then, though. Does that sound okay? So yes. I just say, yeah, if you want to kind of introduce yourself as you, you know, provide your answer to your question, that would be great. Um, not a problem if you want to throw things in chat either. Um, I will, I will make sure to keep an eye on that as well. Um, but I guess our first, our first big question is what does the group want to see more of out of PM? I mean, you know, we, you heard a lot about the directors and how they're, they're here to serve you, right? They want, they want to know what you guys as the chapter are looking for and looking to get out of being a member. And then feel free to introduce yourself when you answer that. Yes, question. absolutely. You, introduce self promotion yourself. is great. Like yes. to know who you are. Because that's part of our networking aspect mm -hmm. as well. You don't all have to jump in me at once, though. Yeah, and and any any type of questions are 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 fine too. They don't, you know. So. Yeah, if you guys want to start with, you know, what you want to see less of, sometimes that that's more. Okay. Huh. So I'm not. Go ahead, Steve. Did you want to? I jump said in? I. I was gonna say I'm not bashful. I'll jump in here. I'm <laughs> Steve Nelson. I'm Steve Nelson, project manager, and um, I'm interested. And in, forgive me, I just joined. So if you've already talked about this, just let me know. Um, love to see more in-person networking. Okay. Oh, I yep. think that sounds great. We're all nodding. We would, we yeah. would too. Yeah. That, that is oh, the yeah. post pandemic. So would we all, Steve? I yeah, think. exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that that's been a topic over over the past couple of months, Steve. And we would like to pull something together in late summer um, or or September for a networking event, and then um, our professional development series is going to be in person, and that will have a post, um, like too many. Well, it's not completely um, solidified, but it'll be like guaranteed one network event after it, but maybe two. Correct. Yeah, that. Steve, are you thinking more purely networking event, like every like happy hour style people, you know, kind of just milling about, or are you thinking of like an in person event that you know you can meet everybody? Well, back in the oh. day before COVID, <laughs> we did get together. We did. Days, uh, so. Yeah, no kidding. It was a long time ago. We did get together. We did do educational sessions. Would love to do that again. Um, yes, I absolutely love getting out there and um, catching up with everybody. Chris, we haven't talked in a long time. Uh, would love to get back together and just see how things are going. Likewise. Um, you know, I, I, I know many of you just because of my past role, but I'd love to, you know, just get back together and see how things are going. Wonderful. Yes. Since we're talking about this, um, you know, we as a board, we have been trying to gauge the the cost of a networking event that our members would be willing to pay. Um, we have several ideas on the table, some less expensive than others. I believe the most expensive one we're entertaining right now would be an axe throwing venue and the least expensive would just be a brewery um, with, with anything in between thinking about a baseball game VIP section. Um, what, what would a member be willing to, you know, av on average, what do you think is fair to pay to, to attend a networking event? Because some of these costs do have to be covered. By the by, the attendance fees. We're we're genuinely curious. We we you know it, there there as you can see there are a few of us on the board and our ideas of what is reasonable may not align with everybody else's. If you don't speak now, you might not like the outcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you what it used to be, but that doesn't mean that that's what well, that, it needs to be going pre, forward. Yeah, that was pre-COVID. Exactly. Inflation was way different then, right? <laughs> that's yeah. true. However, um, you know, back my history, I don't think we've spent a heck of a lot lately. Yeah. So maybe there's a little bit that we can do. Um, but, you know, just getting pizza and, and water and all of that stuff and, and having an educational session and, you know, 30 minutes of networking is a good place to start. That doesn't mean that that has to be the end all be all because I'd love to get together on a social, you know, and just, you know, axe throwing or whatever. Yeah, I'll, I'll pay a couple $20 bills or whatever in order to do that. But, you know, that's me. And then the other 
challenge is where because you know you've got the portland area you got the lewis and auburn area you got the bangor area and want to be inclusive so mm. all these all these fun questions to answer great thank you steve okay. and we're seeing answers in the chat too at 15 yeah. 25 dollars mm. and and we did we did actually create a heat map of our membership mm. in maine and yeah. there a vast majority of our members do live in the portland area which actually surprised us we we expected more in bangor and along the um you know the, the coastal areas and there were quite a few but by far it was what was it danielle close to 80 85 to 90 percent of our membership is actually yeah. in the portland area yep right yeah, right. yeah that, that was a very useful tool for sure i think um yeah so i'm seeing a lot of 15 to 25 um but i'm also seeing a lot of it depends on the event right um i right. have a feeling that steven's probably behind the sports event uh, maybe <laughs> the VIP box, um, which I don't know. I I think that would be a fun idea for sure. Um, Surprise! Indeed. Danielle's behind it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, mean, I love it. Baseball <laughs> games are nice. Though. I'm I'm I know it's not hockey season anymore, but I'm not Thank sure. That, does the do they have a uh, like a VIP section at the Cross Insurance Arena anymore? Uh, where where you can have a, like a group setting there, or is that not possible? They they do, Chris. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. They have like a little, uh, it's like a little Chick Fil A kind of like section that's actually right up against the 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 glass, pretty much, mm -hmm. um, with like a row or two of seats and and like a buffet area. So th yeah, they nice. do have that option. Yeah, yeah. that's an interesting. Yeah. And I, I, I know, went to like a, a window. Oh God, I'm sorry, Melanie. Nope. Go ahead. No, you're fine. I was just gonna say, I know my office um, has done those, but I'm not located where my office is anymore. So I've gotten jealous and would love to do that with us. Yeah, I actually did one of those with the uh, Wyndham Chamber of Commerce. I was invited. And I'll tell you, that was a lot of fun being right up against the glass. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a good time. Okay, I, I see. So we have from Neil here, which is, is a good idea. I think that's how one of our other networking events were, where it's like at a brewery or a restaurant, where it's kind of like, as an individual, you can gauge how much you spend. Um, you know, you can get one beer as opposed to like maybe getting a whole meal. Um, but it does look like most members are most most in the chat, at least are saying like maybe 25 being closer to a cap. Um, mm -hmm. no, Megan, does that give? Oh, go ahead. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, go ahead, Megan. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to say um, it's really good, really good feedback um, uh, about um, the value proposition. And there was a couple of questions about PDUs. Yes, you absolutely get PDUs on top of that. So that's uh, an extra bang for your, for your dollars too. It's one PDU per contact hour. So if we have a couple hour networking event, you can get a couple of PDUs for that. And we'll set it up on the site so you can um, register and um, claim your P PDUs. Hey, Joe, correct me if I'm wrong, but when they did the thing at Sebago, did they not also do a brief um, explanation of the of of the process uh, at the brewery where that there was actually a, a management process that was explained uh, during the tour where there was actually something learned in addition to enjoying yes. the brewery? Yeah, right. So, I mean, yeah, yeah fantastic. Yeah. I think that was unique. We had a, a member or a board member who had a who worked or or had a family member who worked at that brewery. Was that correct? Yes, that was Luke actually. Luke had a nephew um or nephew in law who was one of the brewmasters at the brewery we held the event at. So, so we are all, always looking for those kinds of connections. If you exactly. if you if your place of employment is able to offer us a free venue. For any of our events or or any of our networking, please speak up. We're definitely searching for venues, and that is partly why we haven't gone in person yet. We we are um, actively searching for a venue for our September event right now. I have one. We do have one for the October Professional Development Day. Uh, that that is a paid venue, though. We're searching for a venue that will not charge, so that we can offer more value to our members. Yeah. So if you know anybody or know anybody who knows anybody, anybody's uncles, cousins, brothers, sister knows somebody, speak yeah. up. <laughs> it's surprising how quick you can find those connections for sure. Right. Um I okay. just had one comment around the the 
the pricing um, and something I don't think has been brought up yet, but this is, I think we as a board have, you know, tried to relate to the group here, you know, this is something we've been considering and talking about, you know, just so that we can bring more value um, and have more options, right? The, the, the free every event kind of limits those, those opportunities, you know, to do more, I would say involved activities, you know, minus what Steve, you were recommending, which is having it, you know, getting together at a pub or at a restaurant and kind of just having that networking opportunity that drinks or food would be on, on the attendee. Um, but just having that, that, that mechanism for bringing a group together and using the PMI site to post those types of events. Um, but if you look around at some of our other like local chapters and even chapters throughout the country, it's pretty common for chapters to charge um, for, for um for membership events um so and actually this 15 to 25 range i will agree is is higher than what we've even seen um at, at the other chapters so um that that was the one comment that i just you know wanted to to add or throw into the ring i've been taking notes um over here and monitoring the chat and the feedback that's provided okay so what you're saying is everybody should have not given a minimum number and should have stuck with the math <laughs> <laughs> No, this is great. Yeah. Um, no, off the top of your head, the average size of the events that we I think it's ranged pretty <laughs> drastically. Yeah, it's um the ones that we well, just be pretty honest, we don't mess up on the um the the uh Zoom meetings. We average uh, upper twenties to lower thirties. And that was typical of in-person events in the past as well. Okay. I will tell you that whenever we've gone to a site and learned about the project management that they do, that, those are huge. For example, we did actually go to BIW one time. And let me tell you more. That is that is the PMBOK mm -hmm. in all its glory. Oh, yeah. So if anybody has anything that they want to show us, that would be awesome. Okay. Um, I think we've covered most in the chat here. Um, I we we slightly touched on it, but I know um we had a chat here saying that would like to see more PDU opportunities. Um I will say I as a as a member wasn't completely aware that like for networking events those also would count um for the contact hour so um i don't know if that helps maybe shed some light too on your your comment here um on seeing more pdu opportunities but i know we have a we have a lot coming up summer can be kind of hard with scheduling yeah. too another thing i'd like to bring up too um danielle is starting a book club those are all also um mm -hmm. PT, um, PDU opportunities for in-person, and you also get PDUs um, for your reading outside of it. I don't have it memorized what the maximum amount is that PMI will give you for self-directed learning, but you can get, you know, I don't want to say, you know, you can get, is, you know, all 60 through directed, um, like what, what Danielle's putting on. If she did 60 of them, you could, you could get 60 PDUs. But what I'm getting at is the part you do outside of that reading, you'd have to look up on the, the website. But yeah. it's another PDU opportunity. And we're starting that this week. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And, and actually, oh, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, I, gonna say I and networking. So. Exactly. And actually, Kristen Sinsaba, who is one of our uh, members here tonight, um, she is actually responsible for really spearheading a lot of that. I've just been helping to to facilitate getting it to our website. We're, we're working with Steve uh, Molina. Um, but yeah, that's that's an, an um, our kickoff inaugural book club is starting this Thursday. And as Joe mentioned, you know, there there are PDUs offered with that event and review of the book. Um, but then you can turn in um, for more more PDUs uh, for for reading the book um, outside of the two or the one that the event will offer on Thursday. Um, and, and that kind of segues into another comment that I'd make, you know, outside of having you know, a set networking event, you, you can gain PDUs by helping and volunteering with our chapter. It's similar to what, you know, Kristen is doing by helping to lead and orchestrate the book club. Um, and and she, she actually started that off as one of our, our active volunteers. And then Melanie tonight helping to moderate and facilitate this roundtable, um, you know, that that coordination and work she's doing to, to help 
put on this event, she would be able to put in for additional PDUs. So um, there are other ways to, to earn those PDUs if that's what the group is looking for outside of your traditional networking and, and monthly membership events. I don't think your idea is too crazy. We are listening. Yeah. It could be great. When I, <laughs> when I got started, I would earn um, and still do earn like PDUs for the social media posting. So if that's something that you feel you have a, a really good knack for, we're, we're always looking to welcome in volunteers and provide PDU opportunities that help us engage with membership. So. so are you telling me that we might soon see like, you know, Instagram reels and TikTok for PMI? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe yes. you never know. Maybe you could be the one that drives that. I mean, who, you know, I who knows? don't know that I have the technical chat. <laughs> I would be willing to help. But those are mediums yeah. that if people could yeah. help um, do things that that are that's directly eligible for PDUs. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, just in the name of time, because I want to be respectful of everyone's time, I'm going to jump to: Is there anything that people want to see less of? Anything that, you know, you're just really not working for you? Are you sick of seeing us all on Zoom? You have no interest in driving to Portland. Now, you guys are all super happy with the board. I mean, I, I guess see why, but I think they are open to crit criticism if you have it, if it's constructive. We wouldn't be here if we didn't have thick skin. <laughs> we're all project managers we all have half thick skin that's true <laughs> oh no kidding okay i guess if everybody's super happy then you guys are all just i mean i know that you're all fantastic but you guys don't have to change anything well i well, did <laughs> as far as seeing less we definitely need more of many things yes that's, that's for sure that's so, true so part of the takeaways that I'm hearing is is um, that we should do more of is is more of in person events. They could be networking or they could be you know in person uh, monthly offerings. Um, we're not doing enough PDUs, so we need to offer more PDU events. Is is what I'm hearing out out of the conversation um, um, going forward. And um, I'm sure, and those are all very attainable and achievable things for the chapter to be to to be able to do. Um, to do. Am I missing anything be besides that? Um, so one question that I, I kind of want to throw out there that's a follow up. Um, you know, I know we try to have one program a month, and I know that these programs are not easy to put on and take a lot of effort. But are you guys? Are you looking for more than that? Are you looking for more events, whether that's like, you know, one speaker a month plus a networking event plus book club or what What would be a good cadence? Because I think there's probably a fine line between like too much to where we're driving you all crazy um, and like too little to where you don't feel like you're getting, you know, enough engagement with PMI Maine. And obviously you wouldn't have to attend everything. Yeah, I was going to say, this is Kristen. I think it would be good if we, I mean, just offering more than one event per month, just so, you know, in case due to time schedule availability, <laughs> that one meeting doesn't work out for everybody. Yeah. I, I think it would be good to have multiple options throughout the course of the month. So folks, you know, if they couldn't attend today, you know, could attend the book club on Thursday or maybe sometime next week. Um, so I think that having that variety in more than one date would, would be nice. And then I was going to say, I'm, I don't know about everybody else, but I'm an hour and a half from Portland. <laughs> so I think uh, like networking, I, I work from home. So it'd be really awesome to get to meet folks in person. Um, but a three hour drive, you know, down and back, I could probably couple it with maybe a stay, you know, a week, a, a long weekend or something in Portland. But I think, again, it would be nice to be more inclusive to have maybe, you know, a meeting event in Portland, but then also like Bangor for me would be a little closer than Portland is. So maybe two in-person meetings, one in the Portland area and one somewhere else for, for other folks to be able to attend. 
I want you so, to think about Augusta. I could easily, I'm, I'm in. But that'd be super easy. Yeah. <laughs> that would be much easier, especially this time of year, getting on, on 95 to go down to Portland mm. with all of the traffic. Um, yeah. Augusta would be a much nicer drive for me. That's very achievable for us to do. Are there any other locations that outside of the Portland and Augusta area that the team here would be, or the group here would be interested in? I like Neil's response. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd be happy to host. Okay, it looks like, yeah, it looks like events. Augusta is definitely another hub for, for us to take a look at. Right. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. From your heat map, uh, what was the uh, membership like up in Bangor? Uh, about 30 something. I can pull that back up actually. And probably. Yeah, same. And hopefully, you know, having different types of events, different times during the month, maybe might help just increase overall member activity. Um, different locations we can have a, a thriving Augusta group as well. I think you guys are pulling up the map, is that correct? We don't have to stick stick on that. I don't need an answer right away. I was just curious. Okay. I was curious too. Yeah. <laughs> better numbers but it's turning out to not be an easy yeah yeah okay um so it, we also touched on this one just a little bit about um you know how members can get more involved in the chapter you know coming to the events is just really one piece of you know potential member activity um we talked a little bit about you know use your connections if you have an idea for an event have an idea for a space um that is always welcomed and very helpful um if you want to just drop in the chat if you guys would be interested in in volunteering with the chapter or helping set up an event um we can just take down your names and then reach out to you separately about that um and by volunteer you know the i'm a volunteer the team is great and very respectful of your time and your commitment so by volunteering, you are not going to have the same expectations as a board member of time or anything like that. Um, you can absolutely, you know, fit it into your life and what you would need, even if it's just you want to help with one event versus, you know, be on the committee or if you're, you know, very excited and want to help in all aspects, that's fantastic. Um, but okay, great. I have another yeah. good example that might not cross people's minds. I think we've touched on it, but um, you know, volunteering might not mean being in a capacity where you're joining a committee. We do have a programs committee of volunteers that, you know, Melanie and Kristen, and I think I think that's it, but we have a few other people um, that have reached out. Um, but if you're, you know, you might not, as Melanie said, have the time to do that. We had somebody else who is a chapter member reach out and brought us an, um, an event to potentially have in November. Um, so if you know of a, an event or have that connection at your company, you want to reach out and put us in contact with that person. Um, you know, that's that's also another example of, you know, volunteering and, and, and bringing bringing some of the um, value that we've talked about that the, the team here would like to see. Yep, company hosted events are great. Tom Little in the chat. Okay, I'm just taking down, taking down some names here. Um, are there any other uh, just comments or things on your mind that you would like to to talk about before we kind of do more of a wrap up and um, with the group? Matt Piazza, and I have a question. It's very impressive that you have a mapping of for people's membership location. Do you also have a survey or database of the members of profession? So who works in government, who works for construction, who works healthcare? Because that would also have a good drive for the types of programs and pursuits that we would want. Uh, but you know, and oh, my question. Uh, yeah. Yes, there is a listing. Um, 
um, whatever the person puts in when they sign up for the for the chapter that um, that if they choose to, they can put the company they work into, which would, to your point, would give us an idea of, you know, are they in healthcare, are they in retail, are they in manufacturing, et cetera. Thank you. Who would have that information? Um, the PMI main has that information. Yeah. Um, so would Danielle have it? I mean, so in charge of programs, so she could uh, look and talk about what to topics to pursue for, me, for different programs? Yes, she does have access to it. Great. Yeah. Okay. If I'd like to reach out to you, Danielle. Yeah, that'd be great. This is a and good meeting. We do. Oh, go ahead. Matt. This is a good meeting. Good, good productive meeting. Thank you. Megan, we do see your heat map. Thank you. I wasn't sure. <laughs> <laughs> we, you can see that in, in Bangor, I mean, and it, it's, it's a little difficult. That's, you know, you get what you pay for and this was free. Um, mm -hmm. in, in Bangor, you, you can see that there's not as many members as one would expect, but down here in Portland, you've got a 30 marker, 13, um, up in Augusta, a few higher numbers some along the coast, um, but ultimately most of our membership is definitely in the Portland area. We have a member in Hawaii. Wow. wow. <laughs> Find that amusing. <laughs> okay. okay, and then Danielle, can you remind me what is the, um, email address for program is it just programs at pmimain.org it, yes it's programs at pmimain.org i'll drop it in the chat okay perfect we have some people ready to reach out which is wonderful okay <laughs> i would attend a hawaii event yeah i think that would be wonderful um, I would too, but I think that might be over my, you know, $25 uh, <laughs> threshold there. If you guys can make that happen, I'm all for it. <laughs> okay. So we are actually doing really well on time so far, um, in case anyone was curious. Um, Thank you, any... Tom. That's, that's nice of you. Yeah, I, I have a daughter in the Air Force, and she tells me all the time, Mom, it's so weird to be thanked for my service everywhere I go. And, oh, yeah. And, and, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I I think it's nice. My husband says the same thing. He's in the Marines, and yeah, same thing. He always, he's like, I never know what to say. So I was like, you just say thank you. Or you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. I guess would be actually probably the better. <laughs> right. But not compare ourselves to our wonderful servicemen and women, but it is very nice to receive that recognition. So yes, thank you, Tom and everyone. I think there's been other very much kind words. And you guys, yeah, you exactly, Tom. It is a lot of work, and um, just you, your dedication to to making sure that members are getting out of it what they what they need to and and what they're looking for is incredible. I mean, just look at the growth of the of the chapter um, in itself. Okay, so um, I think we are pr pretty much ready. I know, um, Joe, you kind of gave us a, a, a good, I know you get paid. There we go. Um, <laughs> See, this is why we need to network. I love this group. This is fun. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. This is what it's about, right? This makes it worth it for you guys. <laughs> Um, I know, Joe, you kind of gave us a, a pre-wrap uh, up there of just kind of the different things that we've talked about um, of just more PDU opportunities, more in-person, but overall just more, um, you know, diverse events, having events in Augusta, having events um, outside of Portland as well, um, and networking opportunities. We talked a little bit about, you know, cost threshold, um, and then just honestly, some, some education on what can and can't be counted as a PDU, which is very helpful as well. Um, and then I think we got some new, uh, new ideas and new volunteers too, which is wonderful. Uh, anything I missed? Anything more we want to bring up? I think we, 
Go ahead. Oh, sorry, Melanie. Were you asking if there was anything else to add to the your wrap up, or are we ready to move on? Um, either honestly, um, if I if I forgot anything, feel free to let me know. If you didn't get a chance to talk about something, um, will there be sessions for program development? Mm -hmm. Are you talking in the professional development series or just in general? We, this we is Jean Cassidy. Um, I, I was just I was just uh, offering up whether or not maybe we would do some kind of a brainstorming session for programs, the types of content that we might want to offer, and whether or not there might be a group or a, yeah. a, a meeting series of meetings to discuss the type of content we might want for these programs. Yeah, Jean, actually, we have a programs committee um, right now that's meeting on a monthly basis. So if you or anyone else is interested, you know, you can reach out to the programs at PMIMaine.org uh, website, our website email address I dropped into the chat. Um, and, you know, we'd love for for the members who are interested to come to those monthly meetings. And that's exactly what we do at those meetings. We try to discuss and brainstorm the topics and content um, and then we, you know, ask for assistance and taking it a step further to try to help to organize those types of events once we have a topic um, and potential speakers identified. Um, everything from outreaching to a potential speaker to coordinating with that potential speaker and then helping to host an event um, similar to what, you know, Melanie's doing here tonight. So if, if you are interested in that or if anyone's interested in that, um, feel free to reach out to me and I'll get you plugged in with that group. That'll be excellent. What night of the week is that? So we week? are, yeah, we're meeting. Um, it's It fluctuates between the second to last and the last Thursday of each month. I don't think we have anything on the books for the month of June and July. Um, we, we can definitely kick that off, but I know people are pretty busy with their summers. Um, so I do, you know, kind of anticipate that group possibly picking up in full force um, come, come like August, September. <laughs> September time frame, August, September. Great. Thank you. Yep. Okay, just making sure there wasn't anything else that I missed or any other questions people had on this specific topic. We really okay. appreciate all the, all the questions and the engagement. Yeah, no, this has been fantastic. I think this is exactly what, what we needed out of this meeting. Um, but I'm not gonna let you guys go just yet. Um, we do have kind of an open topic discussion. We figured it'd be a good opportunity. Um, if there's any questions or problems that people wanted to go over that you might be facing at work or any kind of program management questions. Um, so I will open that up uh, before I have a couple that I would like to share with the group as well. Any difficult problems that you'd like to get some feedback on or anything? exciting going on in your company or in your role? No, you guys are going to make me go to my questions first. Huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> no problem. Um, so I'm just kind of curious um, from you guys. I know my company, so we do government contracting um, where we mostly do software development. Um, but I always find that the summers are very... Um, more of a slump than a surge, I guess. Um, you know, everybody has their planned vacations and it's like, okay, what work am I getting done in between the holidays and my days off um, and my trip? But I, I've i heard from a couple of people that summer is really busy um, for their, for their um, occupation and their, their industry. So just kind of curious what everybody's experience is with that. Um, and... Years ago, I, I was a PM for United Technologies, and I experienced what you experienced in the manufacturing uh, for military components. And summers did go. Um, and I'm in healthcare now, and it's 365 busy. It just doesn't stop. People don't stop having babies. People don't stop having kids. I mean, I'm getting sick and, and so forth, un unfortunately. So, um, um and then the other one, I was in retail, and that had a somewhat fluctuation um, towards the um, the middle of summer because it's not as many like the Fourth of July and you know and stuff is big. But once you get away away from that, 
stuff people took advantage of being able to take time off. So that's been my experiences in, in uh, a couple industries. And in my experience, uh, it, it depends on the fiscal year of the company I'm working for and the fiscal year of the companies we're contracted with. And, and so that fiscal year in a lot of companies is January 1st, but in, in many companies, it's, it's actually July 1st. And so I have experienced the summer surge in most companies and in my current company, both a summer and a winter surge to Joe's point, <laughs> just surging all the time, um, except around maybe uh, April and late November, things can slow down a little bit simply from the forced holiday um, break and and the the pto that happens around spring break families and you know the, we have we we do have forced slumps based around common pto times but generally those those surges those surges around the fiscal year marks for us mm. yeah it's a good point Megan. um so for me at in, in higher education the summer time is is typically a very busy time to try and get a lot of new improvements up before the kind of new fall term starts to to get going. Um, summer term, of course, is, is a thing you have to deal with, but it's typically uh, less in terms of enrollment for us. So provides a solid opportunity. And then, um, like Megan said, fiscal year end for us is a big thing, too, because ours is um, end of May, beginning of June. So that's always a big thing to get in, you know, financial requests, how many, you know, what's the budget looks like and, and, you know, any use it or lose of dollars, those types of things. So um, typically more of a surge and then it would uh, slump around the, the winter time and the new year. Yeah. I, I think within our company, we we're government contractors as well, like Melanie and ACOM, but within the, the team that I work with, with disaster recovery and emergency management, it's very reactive uh, as you might expect. Right. I mean, um, but I would say that since COVID, um, the workload has, has, like Joe mentioned, there is not really much of a slump anymore. Uh, now the workload is steadily very, very busy. Um, and especially with all the new funding streams that are coming out from the government for infrastructure repair and for mitigation and doing pre-disaster mitigation and trying to put money up front to avoid disaster later and to, to better prepare for them later, uh, a lot of communities are really... Um, much more engaged with the disaster recovery progress process up front than, than than afterwards. So we're busy all the time now where it used to be hurricane season would mark the beginning of our busy season. And then after Christmas is over, we'd pretty much kind of be a little slow until that happened again. But now we're busy year round. It's, it's bananas. I mean, I didn't expect to be here now. Uh, I, I expected to be somewhere later, uh, but this, this is, uh, this is was a little bit of a surprise. So um, we, I just find us to be much more reactive and and, and spontaneous than than uh, steady uh, like we used to be. Okay. No, it's it's always very interesting just to see how everybody else's um, you know industries function and and just the different problems that they're facing too. Um, yeah, no, definitely. It helps with that, you know, diverse membership and, and what everybody's dealing with. Um, I do have another one, but I don't know if that sparked any any questions from anybody. I'll jump at once. Hmm. Okay, so this one's this one's a little different, but so you guys project managers, what is your your go to method for dealing with a difficult stakeholder? We've all had them at some point. We have. I don't think there is a go-to method. You know, I, I, or I guess was I, one that was successful. I repeat this a lot. Project management is both a skill and an art, and the art comes in in relationship building, communication, and so the those difficult stakeholders. I think the number one, the number one first stop tactic is relationship building. If that doesn't work, <laughs> um then 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 it's time then it's time to go through the tool bag mm. um and and find out why are they difficult are they having personal issues are 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 they unclear about the task at hand did 
do they not understand what's going on or what's being asked of them? A lot of times people are too embarrassed to admit that. Um, and, and, you know, for example, there's, there's a woman who is a difficult stakeholder on a project that I've been working on. And, um, she, she would answer emails in all caps and, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, her camera would be on in appropriate times. Well, it turns out she was almost legally blind. Uh, and so finding that out, you know, it, it was, was crucial to point out to, to the rest of the stakeholders on the project and maybe have some understanding towards her. She wasn't trying to be difficult. And I don't think most people try to be difficult. I think the difficulties in a person's life makes them difficult. Now, now sometimes people do intentionally try to be difficult. Maybe they don't like me as a project manager or like you as a project manager and they're intentionally being difficult. In that case, you go to their boss. That's why they have a manager. You know, you 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 copy you copy their manager on on communications or or, or pull in somebody who has some sort of influence on them. Or perhaps you choose to to go through a different avenue of communication. If somebody does just doesn't like me or for some whatever reason, you know, J Joe, can you always talk to this person? You're, they like you. Or Melanie, can you, you know, they like you. They don't like me. <laughs> you know, that that's where the art of project management comes in. Is 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 um, that's a very individualized situation. That's yeah, so one, spot on. That yeah. is so spot on. It's all about relationships. I think. I mean, I, I somebody asked me what we did, and and it doesn't really matter. Um, we could be selling whatever widget, or manufacturing whatever widget, or or promoting whatever widget. But the bottom line is, it's all about relationships. People generally want to work with people they like and that they can trust. And so the 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 idea of relationship building, I I honestly don't think you can possibly overstate that i mean it's just an enormous piece of how we do business regardless of what you're doing business with uh it, it's just it's so huge um the more i do this the more i find that out so uh it's just absolutely about developing relationships absolutely and yeah, i think one of oh go ahead Oh, no, I was just going to say, just building off of that, that that's um, one thing that I, I would, you know, would echo what Chris and Megan have already said. I, I, whenever I'm on a new project or working with a new team member, or even just in a new setting with someone, I try to ask them personal, not too personal questions, but personal questions, learn about their family, learn about their hobbies. You know, the, the folks you work with, we are all, all people outside of work. We have interests, we have challenges. And um, and then what I try to do is I try to store that away. And the next time I interact with that person, I'll ask them, you know, how, you know, how's your child doing? Or, you know, how did that, that big, you know, a sporting event that your, your, your son was having or was attending, you know, how did that go? And I think once you kind of build that one-on-one -on -one relationship, you show that person that you care, you, you can really kind of motivate them to, to do what you're asking them um, a little bit easier. So no, I think that's huge. Um, I think one of the simplest things that I've learned, um, honestly, more pre-COVID than any, or post-COVID than anything else is like meet people on whatever platform that they want to. Like I have some coworkers that will email you back all day, other coworkers that will not email you back, but if you call them, they're more than happy to help. You know, this one wants to be chatted as opposed to be emailing, which I mean, it works to an extent, right? But um, knowing just the best way to to contact somebody, you just can make it make a big difference. Um, at least with my company, we have like seven different platforms that you can copy, can contact somebody on, and some don't check them all. So, <laughs> yeah. Any other any other pieces of advice of just how to deal with difficult stakeholders? How you've managed to build relationships with some of these stakeholders? Sometimes with people, you just need to keep it simple. Sometimes people yeah. really are looking to complicate things. And so keep, keep use as few words as possible with, sure. with those difficult stakeholders. <laughs> and sometimes worst case scenario, just document things so people know that you did your Absolutely. job, even if they don't <laughs> want to say that you did. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's always a good one too. Oh, and that's what we do as project managers. Document it's funny. Exactly. Cus I think customer service enters into this yeah. especially in this day and age where customer service in the world we interact with is, is so sorely lacking, generally speaking. Um, uh, the, the, the simple question, how can I help you? 
carries a lot of weight. Um, so if we, if we are actually interested um, in not just building relationship, but actually helping our clients achieve what it is that they're trying to do rather than just checking the box, right? Um, I, and this is, I, I don't mean to pontificate. I just mean to say that I, I just really feel like that customer service piece is enormous and it, and it's it's very impactful, I think. Uh, I just think that the idea of trying to make sure that the customer gets what they want um, is is critical. Um, and, and knowing that that you are on their team, uh, it, it is that, again, I'll, I'll go back to what we're doing here. Um, we work with FEMA and we interact with them on a daily basis, but the idea, and it was communicated to us at the kickoff meeting that this is a, a very collaborative effort and, it, and it's there's an old saying in the army, one team, one fight, right? So if we apply that idea, one team, one fight, we're all in this together, we're all pulling on the same rope, right? That to me is is, a, is very, very impactful. And I think that that helps grease the skids and, and, and provides that, uh, that energy uh, to move things forward. You know, I think that can be applied in just so many aspects of the job, but just having that strong foundation makes such a difference. Mm. Okay. Yeah, something in the chat here from Tom. So on a different topic, I have a friend who's in, uh, who is a manufacturing engineer looking for a position in that field in the Portland area. And then he left his email if anybody knows of anything. I mean, that's another huge part of this this organization and networking, right? To help kind of connect people. Um, I know, at least just from my experience, some of these technical and engineering positions are very hard to fill and hard to find those people. So if you need a person. Um, do we do anything like PMI? I mean, do we have like a job board that we, we do in the past? Okay. Yeah. See, I'm learning so much today. <laughs> it is. It's, it's on the website job board. Um, I'm not sure if anything's posted right now. No, um, there's nothing. Which is okay. interesting because so I'm, I'm a, I work at a medical device company as a program manager in IT and it's called integer. And so my question to your point, Melanie, which is really good, great discussion. By the way, I really enjoyed this. Like one of my first main PMI meetings. I attended meetings in Buffalo. That's kind of where I came from. And that was really good. So, anyways, um like hiring seems to be a challenge just I don't know are you guys seeing that too like just uh, I guess would be like high quality project managers you know yes. just, okay it, okay so it's not, not it's just all right it is definitely not just you okay like I, um, I didn't think it was I was it just seems like since I don't know where people went or I don't know why I say that all the time I don't, I don't know, know where it changed, went. But it's, been, <laughs> it's been really a, a challenge so Honestly, I think we could probably have an entire event just based off of, you know, hiring techniques and recruiting techniques that we can maybe um, all help each other out with um, for sure. And oh, Oliver, are you watching the chat? Yeah, <laughs> I saw that too. <laughs> Look at that. See, these are how the connections are made. Is, is that um, the ME? The ME? Let me read this. I think he left his email oh, too in case it. you need okay. that. Um, yeah, great. Yeah, no, just to help connect you too. No, that's wonderful. Okay, well, we are getting close to time, um, but I just thank you, everyone. Um, not gonna lie, I was nervous moderating this, but you guys, thank you for for being attentive and active and helping us have a really good discussion here. Um, and thank you board members for just being open to even doing this and, and just listening to the members. I think that just being here and having everybody get to know you makes a big difference. Hey, uh, hey Melanie. Yeah. Sorry, I don't mean to step on you, Joe. Jean asked a question about pro search. I wasn't sure if we saw it. I did not. Thank you. Um, uh, Joe, are you the best person to talk about pro search's involvement? 
Uh, Pro Search has been a strong partner to PMI Main for um, the 15 plus years I've been involved with PMI Main. Um, they're an excellent recruiting company. Um, highly recommend them. Um, if anybody who wants any more detailed questions, you can reach out to president at PMIMain.org and I can um, answer questions and maybe make some connections. Um, just out of curiosity, what does it actually take to become a, a sponsor? Is it a monetary donation or? It's a monetary okay. um, donation that ranges from around $500 to $1,500. Uh, okay. And then you get um, um, email blasts that go out to um, a lot of, you know, the 450 members. Um, we also have a larger um mailing group of past members and so forth. We can go out to that. The other things that we've done in the past too is um, in conjunction with ProSearch, they have a superset of individuals um, beyond what PMI Main has. We've done joint mailings with them um, too. And it does help if you're looking to attract quality project managers, which seem to be in short supply these days, minus the people that are on this call. We're the quality ones. We got to... Um, but they, um, <clears throat> that's what um, sponsorship will, um, will get you and also gives you the ability to have your name, um, company's name mentioned at every one of our events and, and, and so forth. Okay, excellent. Um, Danielle, do you want to go over our upcoming events? Yeah, I figured it was a good time to flash this last slide up before everyone drops off. I know we've lost a few, just a few folks, but just wanted to, you know, take the time just to remind everyone, obviously, what you guys are looking for more events. So we have some more events that are coming um, this Thursday, actually, as we've already talked, we have the inaugural PMI Main Book Club that's kicking off. Kristen Sensabaugh is our wonderful volunteer um, helping to, to lead this effort and um, will be leading the discussion on Thursday. It is going to be held via Zoom, um, but you know, plan on attending. Uh, check out the book that um, we were, were reading or assigned to read for this upcoming book club. Um, and also, for those who attend, we'll be taking, um, you know, votes on what what book club we're going to be uh, or what book we're going to be reading for future book clubs. So, you know, feel free to come check that out and um, learn more about this kickoff and, you know, future book club events that will be coming up throughout the year. Um, July and August, we are going to take a bit of a summer break, but as we've, you know, talked through here tonight and we've mentioned, the PMI main board is going to start to work in getting some of these networking events scheduled and out on our calendar. So, you know, please, please keep an eye on our PMIMain.org backslash calendar um, link for networking events over the summer break months. Um, and then in September, we will be regrouping um, for a normal membership event, um, TBD on if it'll be via Zoom or in person, um, but this will be a construction project management topic um, brought to us by the Beck Group. And then um, not on here, but as we've talked in October, we are planning on relaunching our professional development series in person. Um, so definitely keep an eye out for that um, to be posted here um, over the, the, I'm hoping the next couple of, of weeks so that we can you know start to engage the, the membership and um, encourage some folks to attend. And that's all I had. I think we're ready to close out the event. You know, big thank you, Melanie, for helping to moderate this evening. This has been wonderful. Um, thank you, everyone, again, for your, your wonderful feedback. And, a, you know, big thank you to my fellow board members for being willing to be our featured speakers for the month of June um, and help, um, help bring some valuable information to our membership. Um, no one has any other closing words. I, I think we can conclude tonight's event right on schedule. Thank you, everybody. It's a good meeting. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks.